So I'm very happy to introduce the next speaker who is giving a short keynote, but also he's part of the panel we will uh, have soon. Um, the next speaker is Dr. Christoph Stradl. He's working as deputy CTO for the Software AG, and he's talking about quantum computing and enterprise computing from the value chain to feedback cycles. Christoph, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot for the nice introduction. Yeah, Christoph Strunner is my name, and as you could have guessed by now, I'm living and in working, if I'm not traveling, in lovely Vienna, which just won another loveliest, uh, mo best city to live in. But I'm not working in a local role for Software AG, but at the CTO office, I'm responsible as a deputy CTO for the new stuff. For, or to be more precise, I, one of my tasks is uh, to answer the questions what shall Software AG do with X? And you can substitute any sufficiently advanced technology for X, like distributed ledger back in 2017, sustainability, um, data spaces, uh, the whole Gaia X uh, thing, and of course, quantum computing. We do not, as Software AG, we do not do quantum computing at all. This is why I will lead you above. I will take you away from the technology and I will present to you a macroeconomic view on quantum computing. And because we are an integration company in relation to software, because it somewhere has to be embedded into your enterprise software, that's the macroeconomic, you see value chain up there. And then also on a more integration, more technology, information technology integration topic. Let's take the helicopter and go, let's say, 20,000 feet into the air. We all know, or by now there's uh, the kind of um, uh, the agreement that uh, the, the quantum computing, the core quantum computing platform consists obviously of uh, quantum computing hardware. It consists, and we have had uh, many examples on the stage, of quantum computing middleware, um, the last uh, speaker, of course, a case in point. And fundamentally, as I will argue, this is one of the key takeaways, and quantum computing software, of course. I, for, for completeness reasons, I have all, uh, also included the earlier stages in the life cycle. If you look at the European Union CHIPS Act, in order to um, be really sovereign with regards to quantum computing, you, of course, need to be there as well. I won't touch that. The more interesting part for everyone here, I think, we are in business for making money, are the downstream activities. We need to bring the quantum computing software, of course, closer to the end user. And we have, of course, uh, consultants, we have, of course, service providers, and only then we reach the end consumer. There are two things you can do or you should do with that um, matrix with that value chain. The first one is if you want to engage in quantum computing in the value chain, you need to identify your sweet spot. Software Richie, we don't do nothing here. We are just quantum computing integrators. You know, we, as I'll talk to you later. We are just in that corner. You, yours might be different, your position. And secondly, if I were a top manager, I would look at the value chain and try to find out where, does, where is most of the value created in that value chain. Because I want to be there. I do not want to be a materials and a mining company somewhere in Australia. Where is most of the value located? No one knows really, but we have an example, we have a template, and that's classical software engineering. If you look at, and for simplicity reasons, just assume for the moment that we have only hardware and software, you probably know that the total global hardware uh, market valuation is around uh, 120, 140 billion dollars. How much larger or how much lower do you think is the total global software market? Before someone of you Googles it, I tell you it's five times as large. Around 600 to 650 billion euros is for classical software engineering here. That's most of the value chain. You can argue now that maybe because a quantum processor is a more specific form of computing platform that you don't get a factor of five or six compared to hardware, but only three. Nevertheless, quantum computing software is strategic assumption from us, can be disproved. Quantum computing software is where most of the value will be created 
eventually, including, of course, uh, quantum computing as a service, quantum computing application as a service as such. Value chain software will drive that. I will bring you back a little bit to enterprise computing. I think it is undisputed by now that quantum computing will act like a coprocessor. And we have seen many examples how you really interface that. And in the title, I had the two feedback cycles. That's the first one. You need a lot of pre-processing, readout, etc. But how would you, and that's the problem Software G wants to solve, how would you couple this kind of unit to your other IT applications, the SAPs, the manufacturing execution systems, your CRM systems. We do not expect that the end user of your IoT platform is really submitting jobs, directly submitting jobs to a quantum computer and doing the pre-compilation, the readout, the workflow because of the probabilistic nature. How would you couple enterprise systems to quantum computing facilities. Second, strategic assumptions from us can also be disproved, but also can be confirmed, is that it will be a loose coupling. And I have uh, presented that on the, on the uh, right-hand side. This will be tight coupling. You won't find software actually here, but all the other exhibitors. But this one, these two errors, Errors. Someone has to implement that. And we have um, um, heard in the previous presentation that maybe in the future a submission of a quantum computing job and the reception, the receiving of an answer is more like batch computing. So you would need not a synchronous call, you know, SAP submits, you press enter, and then you have to wait 20 minutes for the stuff to compile. No one is going to use that. So it will be asynchronous communication. We know that. Software, we can do that right now. That's microservices loose coupling. Second part of the coupling of the feedback cycles are the stakeholders beyond end users. Who would that be in IT? Obviously, these are the engineers, the software developers who know how to do enterprise computing, you know, efficiency, agile, scrum, whatever. Do we know how to develop quantum computers, quantum algorithms? We have seen about co-design, co-development, but eventually we will need to combine that because the SAP function here will critically depend on the operations of the quantum computing and back. And the same holds a little bit for the deployment model. We all know um, uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. Most probably quantum computing will also be served as a service somewhere in the cloud because you simply cannot afford having a, um, a quantum computer in your basement. How would you combine those elements? Or because if you have different cloud providers here, A, B, and we love that, you immediately end up in a multi-cloud integration hybrid. If we have mobile computing, mobile quantum computing, we have hybrid. We have on-premise edge computing. And this is what we want to take care of. So the key two takeaways from my call is I have two strategic assumptions. And if you stay tuned, then we may uh, discuss uh, whether they confirm, uh, whether, whether they may be confirmed or not. First one is, Quantum computing software will dominate the quantum computing value chain. Strategic assumption one. Strategic assumption two is the rest of the IT world, your IT landscape with your end users, will only be loosely coupled to most of the quantum computing facilities. How exactly? We still do not know really. We are participating in some projects. We don't really, but it will be loose coupling. There are good um, paradigms like microservices, so that's solvable, but you have to take that into account. The quantum computing uh, facility most probably will not be a very fast real-time engine. So if you want uh, to challenge my two strategic assumptions, stay tuned. Uh, there will be a panel on quantum computing software, whether that is true. The fun thing with quantum com with uh, assumptions is uh, that uh, I, I, I may be right, I may be wrong, we may find uh, a different answer, but it's an articulated way how 
to move forward. And that's also something which uh, we would recommend. And this is why we also engage in quantum computing. Stay tuned, because if someone discovers the single algorithm in the quantum computing software area, this one will be the new quantum SAP. At least this is one of our beliefs. Thanks for the uh, attention. Thank you, Christoph. This was very interesting, very on point. Do we have any questions? We do not have any questions yet. I think we will go make a deep dive into Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely perfect. Thank you.